Overlays are an essential part of live streaming. With the right overlays, you're gonna be able to tell better stories, give better information, and have awesome interviews and so much more. In this video, I'm gonna share with you how you can make live streams work for you and your live stream, and what overlays you should consider adding in to those live streams to make them perform better. Make sure to stay to the end of this video where I'm gonna share with you some unique ways for you to use overlays in your live streams that you might have never thought about doing before. Now this video is brought to you by StreamYard, the easiest way for you to create professional live streams. Overlays are an extension of your live streams. They are meant to help you better visually tell the story so that you can hold your audience's attention and encourage engagement. When it comes to overlays, here's how I encourage you to think about them when it comes to your live streams. First things first, they're an extension of your brand. You're gonna to wanna to make sure that whatever overlays that you're creating are in your brand colors, in your brand themes, in your brand fonts, all the things that kind of go into that brand board. Remember, it's an extension of what you have going on. You don't wanna just have like anything up there that's gonna be confusing or disconnected. You don't want there to be any doubt when someone's watching your live streams that it is anything but you and what you're talking about. Now, you know I'm a big advocate of the ROS or the run of show, which is where you're gonna have like an outline for what should be happening in your live streams. So how this would work is when you're writing your ROS, you're gonna have the call outs of what you're supposed to say and in tandem what you're supposed to be doing. So if you want to make sure a specific slide is showing up or an overlay happens, you can tell the ROS where to put it so you know where to click or your remote producer to do it. Sponsors are a great add-on to any live stream because it allows for you to have support and a little bit of credit ability attached to your live stream. So when you have any sponsors information or things you need to share like events, the product, commercials, whatever it may be, you can use overlays to add that in. And again, make sure you stay to the end because I have a bonus tip of how you can show sponsors and your overlays really cool. You also want to use your overlays to ask questions. Now, a lot of people use like the bottom scroll thing, especially if you're using StreamYard to ask a question, but I really like to add like a full screen graphic that allows for you to ask your audience a question, or maybe you can even do something on the sides or in the upper corners, whatever it is that you were doing. By having that visual question on the screen, it's gonna force that engagement and get people interacting with your live stream. In tandem with asking questions, you're wanting your audience to do something. So using the overlays to make them do that is going to be a great add-on to what you're doing with your live stream to get engagement and hold everyone's attention. There are honestly so many awesome overlay options available to you. You kind of just have to make them. I have a video in the cards below and down in the description below which shows you how you can easily create overlays for your live streams for free and it's super easy and detailed so that you can show you exactly how you're going to want to do this. Once you're comfortable with creating overlays, here's a list of some of the overlays that you should consider creating and using on a regular basis for your live stream. First thing first are gonna be the lower thirds. These are gonna be the things that happen in the bottom of the screen. These are gonna be names, these are gonna be calls, calls to actions, websites, content information. Having these on rotation that look really nice and branded will add the extra level of engagement and let people know what's happening. By having this small little transition here in the bottom third, it's going to hold people's attention better than you think. I also love the idea of using frames. Now frames allow for you to add extra branding, extra option, extra prettiness to your live stream. You can do them not only for your singular view for yourself or if you have different guests on. By using frames, it allows for it to add that extra nicety, like kind of what you see like in like a CNN spot. Again, sponsorship information. You're going to want to make sure that you have the sponsorship information available for you somewhere on the screen, whether it's in the bottom third, whether you have like a graphic up here, you're using that branded opportunity that you have within StreamYard or if you have things happening right here. Or you can even add them into your frames. Either way, give your sponsor extra attention as best as you can. That way that they're getting a lot of visual love and association and you're gonna be able to continue to offer them that real value and exchange hopefully some real money. I really wanna encourage you to study the layouts that are available for you in the live streams that you are using and create call to actions and designs within specific spots. Now I really love using backgrounds when it comes to creating really good visuals. Things Things that are always going to stay the same. That way, if I have like something happening in the background of my live stream, I can easily change it out within the background options or by adding an overlay over the background. The background adds another place for you to create slides so that you can have more things going on in the live stream. Now, this is an example with the Women of YouTube podcast that I produce. I use the background as a way to have this static branding and then I add in overlays based on what's going on, whether it's a screen share, whether it's a sponsor, or even some just the tags. I especially like this as I get more guests onto the screen. That way I'm utilizing the background to its fullest 
potential. Really think through what your call to actions and your different spacing options that are available to you with the different layouts and whether you want to create overlays or backgrounds so that you can level up your opportunities for overlays and graphics in your live stream. Now that we've talked about overlay foundations and what my recommendations for the overlays that you should always have on your live streams, let's dive into some really fun ideas that you might not have thought about doing for your live streams. First things versus with GIFs. Now a lot of live streaming tools like StreamYard allow for you to add video onto your overlay, but often times you don't really need a whole video to do something or you need something animated happening on the screen that isn't a full video situation. And that is where GIFs are going to come in. I love being able to use GIFs for like animated bottom thirds, adding in like a full screen timer or doing different things that I want to be happening while I'm live streaming. When you're adding a video onto the screen when you're live streaming, the video is the focus and it takes priority and, and changes the framing of what's happening. When you use an animated gift as the overlay, it's a totally different scenario that allows for you to have motion and animation onto your screen, which holds your viewers' attention. Now, countdown timers are super important when it comes to live streams. It allows for you to kind of let people know this is happening. It allows for algorithms to activate notifications and so much more. And with tools like Shamer, there's actually a built-in timer that they give you to use. But maybe you want to do something cool. Maybe you want to build something custom. And that is why using a countdown timer and a GIF in combination will work really well. You can use a free tool like Kapwing to create GIFs and animations very easily. And I encourage you to do that all the time when it comes to StreamYard, which is why I use Kapwing as the foundation of all of my graphics tutorials, again, that you can get down in the description below. But some cool ways to use countdown timers is as follows. The first things first is you can use them up in that little like branded logo corner that you have, you can create animated GIF at 150 by 150 pixels and it'll show up. Now, why would you wanna have a countdown timer in that logo? Maybe you need to time someone or give someone a limited amount of time that they are on the screen, kind of like an ESPN show or something like that where like you only are talking about a topic for like two minutes or whatever. By having that countdown allows for your guests and for everyone watching to know when something is about to change and how much time that they have to do it. Another fun countdown timer is actually going to be like a full screen countdown timer. It's really fun to be able to have this countdown timer while like you're actually doing something in the background. Like maybe you're talking about the lead up into what's happening. You're doing a little like dance party. You're just kind of hyping people up. It kind of allows for your guests to like be in there. Kind of like when you go to like an orchestra performance and everyone, all the instruments are like tuning and practicing and making noise and stuff. It's kind of getting you excited and hyped up for being there and getting you ready for what's happening. So full screen countdown timers are a really fun option to get that in there. Now this is one of my favorite little hacks I've been doing since the very beginning of me using StreamYard. This is the two person overlay. Most of the time when you are live on StreamYard, if it's just you, you're limited to the one screen. Like if you share a video or share a screen, you kind of have more options. But what if you wanted to have your whole face on one half and you want to have information on the other? That is where the two screen hack is going to come into place. When you're using StreamYard, you can just take the exact invite link that you would send to a guest, open up a new tab onto your browser and go in that way. You can, you don't even have to have on your sound or your mic or anything like that. And you're gonna be able to add that on to the screen and then you can create the two person overlay. So you're gonna be on one side with your face and the other side is gonna be this overlay graphic that you have. You have to have like the two get guests on screen in order for this to work obviously. But when you have this full screen, it allows for you to have like slides, you're going to be able to like have like a book or a feature or just something that you're highlighting off to the side. Well, it's also like giving equal attention to you and the information that's supporting it. Now, when you're screen sharing, did you know you can actually draw on your screen? Now I do a lot of reviews of people's content. Like if I'm doing like YouTube channel reviews or content reviews on my YouTube channel, I use a, an extension onto my Chrome browser that allows me to draw directly onto the screen so I can draw attention to something and maybe even talk about how I would change it or fill in the gaps differently. When you're screen sharing within StreamYard, you can easily show this on there. It's going to be a really fun way to add it. Now, this isn't to overlay that you can obviously make ahead of time and put that in there. This is something that would organically happen. So you want to share your screen to the tab or the window that you want to be sharing and then use the extension in Chrome to draw over that browser window. Now I had to ask the streamer community about what some fun ways that they're using overlays. And I thought that this overlay that was created with the vertical graphic down the side was very cool. I thought that was a really fun and different way to add branding in and keep a 
a visual connection to the audience without the doing the normal like bottom third and logos in the corners. So I thought that this was a really fun way to add in more dimension and more depth into the overlay situation for better branding. Now, if you've spent any time on Twitch or on really fancy live streams, you're gonna be familiar with like this super frame, this super shape. I love about these that you can have like organic shapes, whether they're circles or like different kinds of frames that you're using as the frame for your overlay. This is just a really fun visual way to connect with your audience based on your branding and what's going on. My little trick for you though, in order for these super frames to work is you have to make sure that you're farther back from your webcam, so that you have more room. Because if you're so close like this, when you're doing your live stream and you have like this frame, you're gonna get yourself cut off. So remember that you're gonna to position yourself physically away from your camera in order for these fancy frame options to work for you. I highly encourage you to play with this and have fun. Just make sure that it's really well branded and has specific calls to action to things you want your audience to do. Now when it comes to overlays, we can keep talking and talking and there's so many fantastic examples of how you can use them. But what about if you want to have all these really cool graphics and things happening in your live stream, but you're just too busy to do it. That's when you want to check out having a remote producer. So watch this video I have for you right here, where I'm going to show you what it takes to be a remote producer for a live stream and what you should be doing while having that happen. And watch this video right here because YouTube thinks you are really going to like it. And until next time, I'll see you soon.